to Jesus Christ by simply saying, you know what, Lord, wherever you go, I'm going to go. Lord, whatever you want to do with my life, I I'll go ahead and do it. Wherever you want me to be, Lord, I will be. Two-thirds, two-thirds of them never got a formal invitation from Jesus Christ. Second thing I see is that two-thirds had a reason why they really couldn't follow Jesus Christ. And isn't that like our lives? We always have a reason why we can't give up everything. We always have a reason why we can't really give up our life to follow Him. I've got to go take care of my past. I've got to go take care of some business with my family. I've got to go say bye. I'm not ready to, to break the, the relationships in my life. And over and over we see men and women and young people who hear the call. They hear and sense the, the passion to follow Jesus Christ, but they can never quite break away. They can never quite give everything to follow Him. And I'm challenging some children and young people that you can make a decision tonight that can change the rest of your life. It can change the course of your life. I'm telling you tonight. I'm not going to preach hype and preach a bunch of stuff to get you shouting. I've come to make you think about the calling of God and to be a recruiter for Jesus Christ to say He's still needing people that will give their lives I'm here to put a guilt trip on you. I'm here just to simply stand with a table that says Jesus is still recruiting. Amen. Amen. Stand here with a table that says, you know what, most of the time, it's going to be you walking up to the table, signing your name, saying, you know what, I'll go. It's not going to be somebody knocking on your door saying, hey, I need you. You're called to preach. Hey, I need you. I, I need you to go here. It's simply you seeing that Jesus Christ has a need and you walking up to the recruiter's table and saying, you know what, here's They were walking with Him. 
when he decided that he needed somebody to go. That they were in the place that he was doing the choosing. They were in the physical location. They weren't miles away. They weren't uh, uh, in their house doing their own thing. And, and Jesus comes knocking on the door. The reason they were sent was because they were in the place that he was doing the choosing. Mark, Matthew chapter 20 tells us this parable of a landowner who would come down to the marketplace. <coughs> he would come down to the marketplace and he looked for laborers because he had a vineyard that needed work. So he came to the marketplace and he found some people who were interested in going to the vineyard. So he picked them and sent them. Then he came back and there were some more there so he sent them. On and on all day he kept sending them over. You know the parable where he says, at the end of the day, brings them all back together and begins to pay them what is due. So people got upset because those who worked 12 hours were offended because they got the same pay as those who worked two hours. And we would be offended by that. And they were. They were upset that they were not getting paid equal pay. What does he say? First shall be last, last shall be first. He said, it's, you agreed to this amount of money, regardless of what anybody else was doing. You agreed for this amount of money. He gives them the money. Then he makes this statement. For many are called, but few are chosen. That strikes me. Many knew that the landowner needed help. Many knew that he needed help in his vineyard. Only a few got chosen. Why? Simply because they were in the right place. It wasn't because they were more talented. It wasn't because they were smarter. No doubt there were others living in the, around the city that were probably more talented, maybe stronger, better looking, had it more together. But those who were chosen knew that if they were going to get chosen, they had to be where the landowner was going to show up. They couldn't be somewhere else. They were going to be picked to work in that day. They had to show up where he was doing the choosing. I'll leave you with that principle tonight. That if we're going to be appointed, if we're, if we're willing to sign our name to, to the recruiter's table, we're going to have to stick with the recruiter. Right, 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 right. 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 We can't just sign our name and then walk away and do our own thing and hope that he picks me. But I've got to stay with him. Because at some point in my life, if I've agreed to follow him, at some point he's going to choose me. And then he's going to send me. And how many people have missed being chosen? They heard the call. They said, yeah, I'll go. But when it was time to be chosen, they were nowhere to be seen because they got distracted. They got distracted with life. They got distracted with relationships. They got distracted by their own faults and their own sins. They couldn't walk with Jesus enough where he would pick them. What I find in that parable is that everyone got paid the same. It didn't matter when you got sent. It didn't matter if you were the first guy to show up or the last guy. Everyone got paid the same. And I submit tonight that it doesn't matter if you're called at 12 or chosen at 12. If you're chosen at 80, everyone's getting the same pay. We're all going to the same place. The pay's the same. But I'm telling you tonight that he wants to choose. He wants to send. The only way that's going to happen is if we sign our name up and say, I'm following you wherever you go. Yes. So I challenge this great audience.